his house today, remember? He doesn't like it when we're late. Oh, me. please, can I have a few more minutes? No, honey. Come on, you lazy boy. Get up. You finish getting yourself dressed, okay? I hear your glasses, Felicia. I want you downstairs in about ten minutes, okay? Now, you get up. Got to have breakfast ready for you in ten minutes. Let's go. Come on. Come on. at home and everything, but I just had this fantastic idea for a new book proposal, and, uh, you know, I just couldn't wait till Monday to talk to you about it. Um, I was thinking that maybe if I just jot it all down and, you know, brought it over today or something, that it might be the best thing, because I'm afraid if I take the time to write down the, um, you know, the whole proposal, that, um, I just, I'm just afraid I might lose my momentum, you know what I mean? And, um, I mean, like, right now, in the shower, my mind was, was racing with ideas. I'm so excited about this. I just can't wait to talk to you about it. Hi, right, listen, I'm running late, and I can't talk, but uh, i got to ask you a big favor. Well, Felicia, turn that thing down, please. Um, oh, first of all, I hope you're still planning to come, aren't you, to the ERA fundraiser Monday night? Oh, good, thank God. Well, listen, um, the problem is that, uh, uh, Valerie Harper was supposed to be our main speaker, and she suddenly got stuck on location, and, and I got 200 women lawyers, $100 a plate, and nobody to talk to them. I mean, I've already tried Hackett and Lily. They're both on little projects, and, and uh, the Polly Mom, Burgess... we don't have any clean oh, shirts. Can I take this out of the hamper? I just did a whole laundry. Check Felicia's dress. But that was two weeks ago. We wore it off. Wear that, please. Go on, go on. Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? They paid $100 a ticket. They want somebody famous. Carl, what kind of editor are you? I mean, do you want a good or do you want a Tuesday? We should turn down that coffee ticket to turn it off. Uh, okay. Okay, fine. You'll get it Tuesday. Uh, but wait a minute. Don't hang up. There's something else I want to talk to you about. Oh, give me a second. Uh, oh, uh, right. Do you think that you could use, um, a uh, thousand words on, uh, how to survive in the 80s from the woman's point of view? Oh, God. Always takes us to Disneyland. Oh, Disneyland. Oh, no, I forgot all about that. Oh, no. Your daddy want me to dress you right. We better go back and change. <laughs> Gotta see my publisher today. I hate the radio station. Got my audition at 3. I want to have time to get my hair curled. Mom, it's okay. We'll tell him we want to dress like this. Yeah, we'll see that we get dirty on the ride. So? It's all right, Ma. Oh. oh, I love you kids. Okay. All right, then. Let's go back. I can make it, then. I can probably make it on time. Oh, I love you kids. Now, you be sure and tell them that, all right? All right. You need to get dirty on the rides. <laughs> Maybe you wanted to dress like that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Hello, this is Polly Harris, and sitting with me here is my guest, Tina, Tina Weathersby. I'm the author of How uh, Astrology Affects Your Sexuality. <laughs> that sounds very interesting, Tina. Tell us all about your sexual uh, your tell us all about your book. All right. Well, Polly, I'm happy to say my book is doing very well. Uh, astrology is a subject that affects us. Come on, Jack. All I'm asking for is fifty Polly. bucks. I really need it. My fan mail's been terrific. I deserve it. Polly, you're doing the show on FM and you keep walking around like you're on AM. You're getting paid way over budget now. Now get back to the mic. But even though astrology is the oldest science in the world, it's only recently that, that breakthroughs have been made exploring the positions of the planets and the moon tides and how they affect the positions of the erogenous zones. Okay, let's take our first call, shall we? Hello, this is Polly Harris. Hello, Polly. Mary McGee from Reseda. I listen to your show every day, and I have a question for Miss Weathersby. Shoot. Miss Weathersby, I've heard some screwy dames in my life with some harebrained theories. 
But of all the ones I've ever heard, you gotta take the cake. I think you're nuts. So what was the question? You're on? I'm on? Oh, uh, do I look okay? It's okay. It's just an audition. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I just want to show. I leave this scarf on. I don't know if it's cutting my neck, you know? You know, I don't have a copy here. Am I supposed to have some copy here? Uh, uh, take it easy. It, it's okay. Just tell us your name and the kind of reporting that you'd like to do. We just want to see if your quality fits in with the quality of our anchor team. So if we stop at any time, don't be upset, okay? No, no, I, no, I understand, of course. Um, okay, um, right. Uh, uh, wait a second. Can I take my scarf off? It's light. It's, it's hot. I'll just, uh, I think it's better in my jacket. Hold on a second. All right, what I think television is really all about is, um, <laughs> do you mind? Can I just get a, a glass of water? My mouth is dry. I'm not nervous or anything. Life. Actually, um, as a matter of fact, what I'm doing right now is the kind of thing that I, I think you never see on. I mean, um, you know, most reporters try and act cool and everything, even though, uh, you know, we can see that they're, well, um, perspiring. Just let me start, okay, again. Um, okay. Uh. All right. Um, my name is Polly Harris. And what I'd like to be able to do is to interview people so to get them to uh, reveal their real feelings. Okay, Polly. Go on. Uh, well, I mean, what, what I'm talking about is like, I, I feel that most people being interviewed don't make themselves vulnerable, really, because the person who's interviewing them doesn't make herself vulnerable. I mean, you know, sure, you want to see an anchor woman's in controlled situation and everything, but uh, I mean, it's like during the Hindenburg disaster. Did you ever hear that, that, that newscaster? Uh, um, when, when all of a sudden he was, he was sobbing and going, oh, God. You know, I mean, it was, um, um, I don't know. It, well, what, I, what I'm saying is, like, for instance, if, if I was uh, uh, covering the next earthquake out here in California, it's the kind of... Um, all right, Polly. Uh, I think we've got a good enough idea now. Thanks a lot. Wait a minute, is that it? Bill, uh, you like the next woman. I'm going for a Am I off? <laughs> Uh, Paul? Paul? Oh, wait, what did you say? Oh, uh, you were good. You were very good. Really? I mean, th then you like my concept now? Oh, your concept was, uh, was terrific. Your delivery was very natural, and, and your personality was, it goes without saying, offbeat. So, I mean, is that good? I mean, uh, what do you mean? I mean, do I have the job? Oh, I have a lot of other women to see. We'll keep in touch. Oh, yeah, I mean, I understand that and all. I was just wondering what my chances are because, I mean, like, if, if you want, I mean, I look much more middle of the road. Like, when my hair is curled, for instance, I look much different. I just didn't have time today. Great and, idea. Uh, we'll yeah? keep in touch. Say hello to your father. Oh, actually, that's another idea I have about famous people and their, and their kids. You know, hey, wait. Paul? What a lovely surprise. Hi, Hello, Mom. darling. Goodness me, why didn't you call and let us know you were coming? I was just driving by. Is Daddy home? Oh, yes, yes, he is, dear, but he's working with some writers. Oh, do you think I could talk to Mom? It's really important. I... Well, darling, I don't know. You know the way your father is when he's working. Well, let's see if we can't get him to give us a moment. Thanks, Mom. How have you been? Well, Gordon starts shooting in three weeks, and they're still rewriting. They haven't 
cast the leading man yet, and your father absolutely hates every single person the studio has suggested. He can't get them to push the start date, and it seems the production manager has some sort of a drinking problem. <laughs> How are you, darling? Fine. You work for a job, huh? Maybe we should put back the rape scene. Gordon, uh, darling, could we interrupt you for just a few minutes? Polly stopped by. Polly. Hi, Daddy. Oh, nice to see you. What a pleasant surprise. Yeah, Ed, Harry, this is my daughter, Polly. I'm sorry to bother you while you're working, Daddy. I, uh... No, it's no bother at all. I'm always happy to see you. Did you know that I'm directing a new movie? Yeah, Mom just told me. That's really great. When they want big drama, they still come to your old man. <laughs> How's it going, little one? Oh, everything's going really well. I'm almost finished my book. I want you to read it. I think you'll be very surprised. Is there a movie in it? Oh, I don't know. Probably not. You know, my writing. Well, I'm just joking. I know you'd rather die than pander to the popular now, taste. Gordon, Gordon. Oh, I didn't say that, Daddy. What'd you come to see me about, little one? It, uh, Gordon, I think Polly would like to talk to you privately. We're just a few minutes. Of course. Excuse me, fellas. Well, now, boys, can I get you some more coffee? Well, this is kind of hard to talk about, but, uh... Well, you know, those magazine articles I do, uh, I mean, they don't even pay the rent, and the radio show hardly pays anything at all, and I just... You know I won't take alimony from Fred. Anyway, I don't know what happened, but suddenly I'm over my head. I mean, I can't even pay off my car. I hate to ask, Daddy. I mean, I never have before, have I? Ask for money? I mean, I wouldn't ask for myself, really. It's, it, it's for the kids. I warned you a long time ago how difficult it would be to earn a living from writing. I know, Daddy, but my book is very good. I think I'm going to be a good writer. And how long have you been working on it? It's really just beginning to happen. I mean, my writing is just beginning to flow. I mean, it's... it's, it's... How long? I don't know exactly. I guess it's been about three years. I don't know. And who's going to read it? Your mother? Me? Who else? I'm sorry, I asked. Forget it. Little one. Don't forget it's it. because... No, it's because I love you. I don't want you to hurt yourself anymore. That's why I'm suggesting that maybe the time has come now for you to take a long, hard look at yourself and see if you really have what it takes to make it as a writer. Daddy, my book is very good. I think you're going to be very proud of me when you read it. I think I'm saying some very important things, and I think it's going to be okay. a very sensational book. I okay, think I'm going to be proud. I certainly hope so. Suppose I call my accountant and have him send you a check. How's that? Thank you, Daddy. How much are your car payments? One seventy-five a month. Betty, Gordon Harris here. Can you issue a check for $175 and messenger it over to my daughter Polly this afternoon? Who should it be made out to? Me is okay. And make it out to her. Thank you, Betty. I appreciate it. Dr. Rossman, it's Polly. Uh, I just noticed the strangest thing. I seem to be out of pills. I don't know what happened. I have a feeling that pharmacy might be cheating me or something. I don't know. Uh, I was just wondering if you would mind calling me in a new prescription. You've already had three refills. Three refills? Oh. Uh, well, uh, look, um, why don't I come in on Monday and get a new one then? Um, it's really no hurry. I could come in before work if that's not too early for you, or maybe uh, during the, my lunch break. Last week, really? You sure? Um, well, then they're definitely cheating me because, you know, I only take one a day and I, I'm short. You've been taking too many, Polly. They're dangerous. Um, Dr. Rossman, please, I, I really need them to write and uh, I'm on a deadline this weekend. Don't you think that maybe just this once you could do it for me as a personal favor? No, I can't. I think you have to come with the law. 
Oh, no. Okay, fine. Look, um, forget it then. I, I don't need them. Barbara's around here somewhere. Polly, uh, I don't know if you've ever met Rod Marino. I haven't, but I'm a big fan of yours. Oh, yes. Polly is the daughter of Gordon Harris. Oh, I'm a big fan of your father's. Are you in the business? Uh, yeah, I have a telephone interview show on KLWFM. Oh, nice. So will she leave the series? Well, you know, she feels that acting has to do with the theater. Mm -hmm. She'll go to New York, try a play, and Excuse then me. maybe she'll... I have hypothyroidism. Yeah, that's low blood sugar. Excuse me. <laughs> Polly! Polly! Mm. Mm. I thought you couldn't possibly come because you had to stay home tonight and write, write, write. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I, I was, actually, but uh, I ran out of pills. Do you have any speed? No, I'm off speed. Oh, but it does to your skin. I'm into tranks now. It's great for the crying scenes in my movie. I just go from one jag to another. <laughs> That's great, but I gotta get some uppers tonight. I'm almost finished with my book, but I can't write without them. My stupid doctor won't give me any. I don't... Come, I've got just the person here to help you. Really? Mm. A candy man. Norman Anderson, remember him? Pick her stuff Isn't it amazing? Out of all the movie stars, kids we grew up with, you and I are the only ones who aren't basket cases. <laughs> Norman? And Norman, do you know Polly Harris, Gordon Harris's daughter? This is Len Anderson's son, Norman. Nice to meet you. It's been a while. Uh, Polly's out of uppers, Norman. What do you need? Um. Pinks, oranges, browns, black beauties, if you got them, of course. <laughs> got reds, big beans, Christmas trees. Christmas style. What do they do? You'll fly. Okay, how much? $30. For that? I'll get that. I owe you a present. No, I... It's on me. You have fun. <laughs> I'll pay you back. I just can't. As so long much. as you're here, I want you to stay and have a good time. Well, I gotta get home. Holly, when is the last time you were with a man? A what? <laughs> you remember those wonderful folks who gave us cheating and lying? <laughs> Speaking of which... Uh, Zoe! Uh, Zoe! Uh, what? 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 Enjoying the party? Don't like aggressive women. Well, neither do I. Sure. Oh,
Well, I'll uh, imagine that. You all right? I thought I had a drink. Oh, well, it was nice meeting you, okay? Are you going to be all right? You going to be able to drive? I don't have a car. Oh. How'd you get here? Some friends drove me. Uh, party. Where was the party? I don't know. Uh, isn't there some boats? But where are the people that drove you to the party? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... I gotta be going, okay? Yeah, no, sir, I'll see you. Well, all right. I'm sorry, I thought... Oh, wait a minute. Did you hurt yourself? Oh. <laughs> Look how you didn't get home. Want me to give you a lift? Good idea. Okay, look, wait. Stay here, okay? I'll get my car. I'll pick up right in the driveway. Right down the highway up there, okay? No, wait, no, wait. I'll go with you. It's too dangerous around here. Yeah, for who? <coughs> hey! Oh. For both of us. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. Where do you live? New York! No! <laughs> Where am I supposed to take you? I mean, where do you... I don't know. Well, where are you staying out here? I haven't decided yet. Oh, come on. Ah! Oh. Oh. Well, out loud. You... Don't leave me like this. You're hurting me. You want me to fall down again? Come on. Hey, come on, let's go. I got a babysitter to pay. I got two kids. Oh. 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 Head examined. Oh, worst day of my life. man that uh, that needed a ride home and, and a place to stay. It's okay. Laura! I'm killing you! Don't worry, okay? Mom, you'll take care of it. It's all right. I'm sure he'll be gone in the morning. He's a very nice man. I don't think he'll be here when we wake up, all right? Now, don't you be scared. Mommy's going to take care of you. star dies, it collapses. And they call it a white dwarf. We believe that. Don't ask me why. Did you go to college? Yeah. Did you get a degree? 
I got two of them. You must make a lot of money. Well, I used to. What'd you do? You ever hear of the space shuttle? I helped design it. What happened? Well, I woke up one morning and decided I wasn't having any fun. <laughs> Are you having fun now? Mommy! Pa! Are you okay? Sure, I'm okay. So, uh, how do you like your pancakes, with or without bacon? Either way is okay. You got it. That's my mother! Wait a minute, where are your kids going? We're going to the little pretty tar pit, you remember? Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Have a good time. Nice meeting you. You too. Are you going to be here when we get home? Nick, go on. I don't want you to be late. Hurry up. kill last night. Oh. She's my cleaning lady. Big, fat woman. She keeps stealing my socks. So, um... What were you doing on a deserted beach passed out at 3 o'clock in the morning? Was that a deserted beach? Hmm. does not give you the right to go through my stuff. Hey, it was right out there. So what are you saying? I should have locked it up or something? I wasn't expecting anyone to be here, you know? I mean, <laughs> I guess it just never dawned on me that anyone had the nerve to go through my personal things. I and mean, how dare you? Don't get mad. I like that. My own editor hasn't even read half that stuff. You did? get into it because the opening is overwritten, but... I'm working on that part, actually. But once your political metaphor becomes clear, I mean, it's really, um... Well, it's funny. And it's full of surprises, and all in all, I think it's quite brilliant. What star did you say you came from? Oxnard. But you do think the beginning is overwritten, huh? Actually, I'm glad you picked up on that, because um, I know that's true. It's really because I, I, I like rewritten it like 50 times or so. Maybe, but did you think that it was because I used too many words, or that just maybe there were like, you know, too many thoughts? I mean, I'm just not sure that um, you know that uh, people are. Um, I just, I'm just not sure people are, are you know ready to um, to hear what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Mm. Did you really think it was brilliant? I mean, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, witty. It's terrific. What about the characters? Were they real for you? I mean, they weren't caricatures? No, no, no. Really? No, no. Sure. Real, real. Um, but the... Uh, uh, I think I should tell you that, um, that I haven't, um, I, I just, I haven't been with a man for, you know, a very long time. Oh, that's all right. It's like riding a bicycle. You don't forget how. I, I, I haven't really had a chance to, to talk to anybody about my book. You know.
a religious fanatic in your house, you know, you give him a dollar. Next thing you know, he takes your car. And then, after your tuna fish is browned, you add your American cheese and your Worcestershire sauce, and then you baste your apples mixed with the mayonnaise, and you add it to your casserole, and you bake it two hours in a medium-hot oven. Then you sprinkle it with paprika, and there you have your tuna fish swirl casserole surprise. Well, that sounds real good. Oh, that's, that's just one of the 1,000 tuna fish recipes in my cookbook, the tuna casserole cookbook. Yeah, well, why don't we take our first call, okay? Yes. Hello, Polly Harris here. Hello, Polly. I got a recipe for Mrs. Redden that ain't in her book. Um, what's your name, sir? My name is Ramon. I'm calling long distance from Tijuana. I see. And, um, what is your recipe, Ramon? Okay, here it is. First, you take your tuna, you take your dish, you baste your tuna, you baste your dish, you baste your oven. Then, you add your figs, you add your grapes, you add your olive oils, you add your walnuts. Then you add your rum and you add your marshmallows. You add your brandies, you add your cherries. Then you add your tequila, you add your onions, and then you add your ginseng. And you got yourself an aphrodisiac souffle supreme, la cucaracha jubilee. So you weren't unfaithful, eh? three times. Mm. I believe in marriage. Are you into drugs? Mm. Mm. I take those for work, actually. Not to get high or anything. I should have been taking them since I was a kid for my asthma, and I take them to help me work. I mean, how else could I stay up all night writing and take care of two kids, do a radio show, lead a normal life, you know? <laughs> Why do you drink so much? Oh, well, I don't drink too much. I pace myself. Well, actually, it's, it's an old family tradition. Um, my father used to say, we should all go through life with that glow that comes from a couple of drinks in us. To the glow. Besides, I'm not the same person when I don't drink. I like you better when you're sober. <laughs> you have never seen me sober, sweetheart.
So I've heard. I don't know. I'd ask me something. Well, there is one thing I'd like to ask you about. Mm -hmm. Your back, what are those sore spots in your back? Oh, um... Well, you remember those 20,000 cans of vicious wild they recall because of botulism. Mm. I ate one of the six they didn't get back. Mm -hmm. And those are the sad result. Mm. You were such a jerk. I can't believe it. <laughs> I open up and tell you the whole story of my life, and you can't even tell me about your back. Hey, hey, hey. Look, everything you need to know about me, you can read in my eyes. Well, you have to remind me about that. I have trouble looking people in the eye. Your eyes are all pupils. Is that the speed? Oh, well, look. I know what you're going to say. I've heard it all before, so just save the speech, all right? What you don't seem to understand, what nobody understands, is that speed, for me, is like some kind of a essential nutrient. You know, it's like a, it's, it's like a vitamin that I'm deficient in or something. I don't know. It's just that without it, I can't write. I'm not the same. Hey, 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 hey. You don't have to explain anything to me. This is Tony, remember? I understand. See, honey, we're just alike. We're two peas in a pod. Promised me that uh, I don't know that you'll never leave me. Or something. Never leave you. Never leave you. Buddy. Well, I need you to tell me when I've had too much to drink. Because I can tell you exactly how much alcohol the body can absorb and at what rate. You can't. Simple differential equation. Come here, I'll show you. 
Come on over here. General, a zero, a pie, four, wait, wait a minute. What? Charge here. I'm Dr. Bailey. Can I help you? Yeah. Well, uh, I think there's been a big mistake. I don't know how I got here. Sit on bed, please. How long have you been drinking? Started last night. I mean, how many years? Yeah. What do you mean, years? A few years. I mean, I started drinking a little beer and some wine when I was 11, 12, or something like that, but uh, I didn't get on hard stuff until much later. Then, see. Uh, Turn around, please. Oh, I drink to calm myself down, like normal people do. I mean, that's why I've never become a real drunk like these people who come in here their own free will, you know? How long have you had these sores on your back? I don't know. Uh, a couple of months. They're just boils or something, right? Wrong. You've got a severe liver condition. What are you talking about? First of all, you're jaundiced. No sores on your back are caused from liver malfunction and systemic deterioration. Have you had stomach pains, dizziness, nah. blackouts? Nah. Well, okay, um, once, twice, tops. Look, Doc, I think you're uh, overreacting here a little bit. Look, you're an alcoholic. I'm going to put it to you straight. If your liver's as bad as I think it is and you continue to drink, you'll be dead in a month. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate the tip, but I think you've got the wrong guy. I'm only 35. I'm fine, really. You can con yourself all you want, but if you don't give up drinking, you're a dead man. And my advice for you is to stay here for rehabilitation. Six or seven weeks, when you're completely dried out, you can begin our group therapy sessions. Listen, Doctor, I, uh, I heard what you said about my liver, and it really shook me up, okay? And let me, let me assure you, I am not self-destructive. I've had my last drink, swear on my mother's grave. And I've got the willpower to stop. I've done it a million times before. If I can do it again. Pizza. 
Oh, honey, you don't want to eat cold pizza for breakfast. It's okay, Mom. Really, I like it. Why don't you call him? I don't know where he lives. It's just sort of a game grown-ups play, you know, like hide-and-seek. You don't look like you're enjoying it very much. That's a carpool. Go get Felicia, okay? Felicia isn't going to school today. She's sick. Felicia's sick? You know you're not supposed to eat the table chips. My life and I can eat what I want. Well, you go right ahead then. If you want to be fat and ugly and have all the boys make fun of you, then you just do that. I want to be fat and I hate boys. Felicia, get out of bed get downstairs. You hear me? No, and you can't make me. You don't think so? This is the last time I'm going to say this, Felicia. You can get up and walk or I'm going to drag you down those stairs. You do and I'm moving in with Daddy. He lets me eat what I want. Come on. No! Let's go. Come on. Hi, thanks for coming. Sit down. Do you want to order something? I don't have much time, Fred. What do you want to see me about? Okay, okay. It won't take long. It's important. It's about the kids. Hmm? I want them to come live with me. No. No. Have you talked to them lately? Polly, they're getting to be very unhappy kids. <laughs> Ridiculous. Look, those kids and I have a wonderful time together. We have a very special relationship you know nothing about. Yeah, well, they never even know what time they're going to get dinner. Sometimes it's as late as 10 o'clock, and then half the time it's, it's pizza, it's takeout food. They just keep telling me all this stuff. Well, they tell me bad things about you, too, you know? I mean, kids play one parent against the other. That's... All right. All right. Yeah, well, well, there's more. What? Felicia tells me these things. Who's this guy, this, this, this Tony, who's been staying with you? Is that what this is about? Fred, we're divorced, okay? I have a right to lead my own life. Not in front of my kids, you don't. No, you do not. Who is he? Look, how well do you know him? How well did you know him before you brought him home? That's my business, all right? I think I can trust my own judgment here, not yours. Well, how many men are my kids going to have to see you sleep with before they're grown? I don't have to listen to this. All right, well, that's not all there is to it. They just keep telling me these things, Paul. I mean, they're scared of you. Oh. They don't know what kind of mood you're ever going to be in. You, you're up half the night writing. You, you, you don't get enough sleep. Nick says you're off your rocker half the time. That's the way he put it. No. I'm a good mother, okay? You can say whatever else you want about me, but I'm a good mother. You can't take that away from me. Those are my babies, you know what I mean? I gave birth to them, I, I raised them, and they, they, they need me. Well, all I know is that I'm paying $500 a month child support, and frankly, I don't think I'm getting my money's worth. Those kids would be a hell of a lot better off with Ann and me. Fred, please, don't do this to me, please. I wanted to tell you face to face, Paul, but I am going to talk to my lawyers. I can't live without these kids, Fred. I mean, I'll do anything you want, okay? Forget the child support. I can support it myself. I'll do anything. I just... Please, don't take my kids away from me. I'm sorry, Paul. I really am.
this for me, please? Sure. Sorry, Mrs. Harris, you've uh, used up all the refills on this one. Oh, I, I know, but my doctor's out of town. Well, it's amphetamine. It's government regulated. You'll need a new prescription. But I told you it's... Look, this is really an emergency, you know what I mean? I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. But I, I need them. Mrs. Harris, call your doctor. Bring in a new prescription. Look, if you can't refill them, could you just give me some to tie me over till my doctor gets back? Like, ten. If, if you give me ten, I'll pay for the whole thing. You're asking me to break the law. Well, who's gonna know? You think I'm gonna tell? Mrs. Harris, these drugs are regulated because they can be dangerous. They can lead to dependence. Yes, so I've heard. Well, that's not the case with me, I can assure you. If that's what you think, I'm sorry. I thought you'd understand. I've gone to, I've talked to women, and uh, they've all expressed the same need. How can we find a way to bring glamour into our lives at a price that we can afford? So all my beauty ingredients contain products that any woman might find in her own home. Now, uh, have you seen my cucumber pack, for example? Excuse me, I didn't hear the question. I'm talking about my cucumber pack. You apply it generously to the areas around the nose. And then you lie down, put your feet up, and let the blood rush to your face. You realize as we sit here talking about cucumber packs, the children are starving in Cambodia? I mean, what are we, out of our minds? Who gives a damn about a stupid cucumber pack? Look at this picture. I mean, look at that. I wasn't aware that this is a political show. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about life. Starving children. I mean, can you imagine what it must be like to be a mother and have to watch your child starve to death? Dear, I'm just an expert on skin care. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I just cannot do our usual two hours of banality this morning. I just can't do it. I've just never been so humiliated my whole life. Beauty is not banal, dear. I'm leaving. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Indifference. Please don't leave us from stage. You didn't hear what she said. Skin care is very relevant. I've been on the Mike Douglas show. I don't have to take that. Please, please don't go. Make her apologize. Please. You've got our own country. And it's not because we don't have the food or the technology or any of that other garbage that they're shoving down our throats. It's because there is profit in starvation. Because huge corporations can make billions of dollars peddling nutrient-deficient foods. And I think that's where the real tragedy lies. And I think it's time we face up to the fact that we have come to an age where profit is more important than, than human life in this country. Don't you think that if the big business, which really controls this country, could figure out a way to, to, to make a profit from the ERA, we would have passed that a long time ago? Oh, women, wake up! Forget about your tuna casseroles, your, your cucumber mess. That stuff is not important. It's not relevant. Just think of the power we would have if we just got ourselves together and got our priorities straight. Men have been running this world long enough, and look what they've done with it. War, starvation, nuclear disaster, clubbing baby seals for profit. I think it's up to us women to make some changes. We certainly couldn't do any worse. I think we've got to get ourselves together, 
And we've got to realize our, our, our potential, our, our, our commitment, our power, and, and, and we'll show them what we can do. <laughs> what do you think? That show ever did, huh? You're fired. You are fired. You are fired. You are fired. What do you think I'm gonna get for pulling that stuff? A Peabody? Didn't you see me hold up a sign? Well, yeah, I saw, but I, I, I figured after you saw what I was doing, you'd realize I was just taking the responsibility to say the things that need to be said. Oh, come on, Jack, don't be so chauvinistic. I mean, look, here's what happened. You know, I've always been split down the middle between my, my, my career and my activism, and during the middle of the show, the, the thought just hit me that what I've been doing wrong is not putting the two together, you know? Not on this show, not on this station. You were hired to be uncontroversial. You, you just Gloria Stein yourself right out of a job. Jack, you can't do that to me, okay? This show's all I got, and I need the money. I got two kids. Now, please. We should have thought of that before. Jack! I... <sighs> Best show I ever did. I... Aces are the bet. Mm-hmm. Keep everybody honest, I bet $250. Oh, my goodness. I dropped dead real quick. Say goodbye, Mary. Well, I've got to keep you honest, as you said. You're 250, and I'm gonna hit you with another 500, Artie. Well, this is your five. I'm gonna go seven more. Seven? Yeah, come right after six. Hmm. Say, Rick, uh, Want to loan me a thousand? You got any collateral? Collateral. Uh, how about a gold watch there? It's worth at least a thousand. Hmm? Let me take a look at that. Give you 654. Yeah, make it 650. What a gentleman. Just give me that money. Okay. What you got, my man? Full house. Ooh, that's a nice hand. How about you, hot chat? Well, I got four little trays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now give me back that watch, all right, baby? Mm, come to Baba. Again, is the plumber back yet? You, uh, tonight? But hold on. Just uh, uh, get a babysitter or something, get yourself all dialed up and meet me at, uh, at, at, at Main Street and Pier at, at the Walls of Jericho. You got that? Yeah, Main Street and Pier at the Walls of Jericho. It's far? Yeah. It's happily ever after time, honey. We'll just stay there for half an hour, please. I'll be there in half an hour. I love you. Bye.
baby, baby, I'm so glad to see you. Mm. Been busy, been busy, been working. Sit down, come on, sit down. I got a surprise for you. Get that. 800 bucks. It's all your fault. I've been on real life tricks since I met you. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Give me your hand. Now the other hand. Is it a ruby? Yeah. <laughs> you talk about luck. The lady you belong to has the same birth story as you do. <laughs> Took me eight hours to get it a better. Ace high flush to my full bow. It's beautiful. Marry me, Polly. We need each other, you and me. We fit, you know. You need me, honey. Yeah, I know. I need you. Sister. Every time I close my eyes, you disappear. Well, that's because of the life we've been living. But things are different now. I want to settle down. I want, I want kids. I want, I want a home. I want family. The real thing. So, so I thought I'd move in with you. <laughs> <laughs> Marry me, baby. What do you say? I say yes. <laughs> you ready? <clears throat> here we go. Let's see what do we have here. We've got uh, some socks and underwear, and shirts and pants, uh, two diplomas, three divorce papers. Count them. Three. Oh, and uh, my mother's picture. She's beautiful. She was. She died when I was six. Oh. Almost forgot the, the piece there is in stones. Now close your eyes. Don't look. Ta da! <laughs> what is that? Well, open it and see. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted for the guy whose house we were at. Look at that stuff. The guy's a lousy poker player, but he sure knows his meat. Look at these pork chops, huh? I told you all our problems were over. Now, what could be more stable than a freezer full of meat, I ask you, huh? Baby, don't cry. Polly, Polly, don't cry, don't cry. You deserve this, baby. You deserve all of this stuff. Bartender, champagne for my fiance. Here comes the bride. <laughs> oh, mommy, I gotta call my mommy. I'm engaged. I'm your mama. I'm gonna be your daddy. You ready? Uh -huh. I'm gonna be my daddy. <laughs> Watch out, we're coming. Okay, look out. Come on, darling. Let's go walk it in here.
Excuse me. Excuse me. We're in here. I know. I thought it's not grass. Flush it down. But no, wait a minute. Before you do, could I just have one drag? I'm kind of in trouble. Give her a drag. How should we? But, but uh, I'm on my last deck, and I'm crashing. D -d -d my mother was a diet little freak. Put her in Camarillo, and she tried to escape, but they caught her. And then she set the lounge on fire. My dad ever declared legally insane. Is worried about you. Can I get you an aspirin or something? No, no, I don't take that stuff. I'm a Christian scientist. And a good mother. I'm a good mother. Mushrooms, we got pepperoni, we got anchovies, you know, little fishes. No, wait a minute. Uh, what, uh, mushrooms? What, what do you think? Uh, they got mushrooms and, and, and pepperoni and, yeah. and anchovies. You, th you think they like that? The anchovies, great. Anchovies. Anchovies. Yeah, anchovies, great. Anchovies, okay. okay. That's what we say, lady. Yeah, uh, what do you say? Mushrooms and, and, and anchovies. Oh. <laughs> it makes me feel like. <laughs> Shut up, all right? 
I broke my nail. I broke my nail. I broke my nail. Don't look at me. Oh, no, 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 I'm not looking at you. Hello? Yeah, it's Polly. Is, uh, is the plumber in yet? Oh, oh, great. Oh, thank God. He's there. He's there. Oh. Hello? Yes, Polly. I'm out. No, 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 no. Now. No, I can't wait. No, I, I know. I know the place. I'll be there. No, please. I'll, I'll be right there, okay? Bye. Okay. I mean, if I had the pills, I, know, baby. I'm okay. I don't know what happened. I just gotta get them, and, and then I'll be good, you know? And then I can be good, so, so you love me? I love you, baby. I love you, baby. You're, so good. You're the best, baby. You're the best. Oh. You're gonna get me the pills? Feel better. Okay, okay, we'll get them. We'll get them. We'll get your pills. We'll get them together, all right? Okay, you can drive? Feel better. Come on. Come on, come on honey. Okay. Come on, baby. Come on. Be better. How much do I get for the chair, man? Forget it. Just get her out of here. Baby, no, no, I'll pay you Come on, honey. Okay. It's all right. He's my fiance, Tony. Eugene. I can only get you five black beauties, baby. What do you mean five? Yeah, five. My connection thought the feds were getting ready to bust him, so he flushes ten thousand out of the toilet. What an idiot! <laughs> okay, I guess five. Hey, what are those, man? I fed him the twenties, blackbirds, bombers, sleeks. One of the truly dynamic pills. If I can get by on this, Eugene, you know I need 12 a day to work. What am I going to do? Well, we just got in some very good methods, really. Crystal. If you'd only learn how to shoot, it's distributed more uniformly. Also, you can mix it with vitamins. That way, you take 150 milligrams of meth morning and night, mixed with vitamin B12s. Lots of good things. You're not popping pills all the time. Better for the body. You see, bruise is easy. I can teach you how to find veins in other places. You practice selling orange. She doesn't like needles. Oh, Louis. Here's the rest. Ten little ones, the beds and the tans. You didn't tell me this is all you had. You know, I wouldn't come all the way down here. Hey, we're in a drought. I'll tell you what. 
How about you have a couple of meth tabs? Pat them up, split the spantules, and mix them together with your morning OJ. That should pick you up. I've never known anybody with such a habit to stay on pills. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. Okay, how much? I gotta get $75, babe. Got it. No, wait a minute. This is my thing. I use my money, all right? I got 50. And that's enough. Here. 75, that's no, it. No, eight. Right, right, 75. Not... Come on, now. Let's go. If you shoot H, it's a lot safer. And it ain't gonna cost you much more. Think about it. Hey, forget it, man. Someday she's gonna try to kick it and end up slitting her wrist like all the other Millie Mouses do. Just trying to be helpful. Right, come on. tomorrow, because, you know, I have this idea for the Civil War novel. I'd like to start on Sunday. What do you think about this? Um, like a stream of conscience, you know, except from Lincoln's point of view. Yeah? You like that? Oh, wait a second, though. Wait a second. That just gave me an incredible idea. Do you know, I've been racking my brain trying to come up with something for a TV news show, and I just got it just like that. Yeah? Listen to this. An anchor woman in action. What do you think? I could do, like, one from a helicopter, one from an ambulance, one from a mental hospital, a jail, any place like that, you know, but not just as an observer, like, like a normal, you know, news person or anything, but, like, really live with them, kind of like a modern day Nellie Bly that's on TV. What do you uh -huh. think? I could wear outrageously styled hats. I don't know, something to give it an in-look and that would go for. I know I could sell this thing. This is great. It'd be great to have some money coming in right away, too. Yeah. I think I should hold off on that Civil War novel. I think I should take this right to the head of the network this week and find out where he lives. It's easy to do that, you know, get him relaxed with the kids and all. I know I could sell it. How do you think? No. Let me ask you something, Polly. Didn't that place back there, I mean, those people, those druggers, didn't that, didn't that frighten you just a little bit? Huh? Oh, yeah. You can't, of course it frightened me. Those people are crazy. They gave me the heebie-jeebies. Could you believe that they're comparing heroin to speed? I mean, those people are killing themselves. They don't even realize it. You know, in all the years I've, I've done speed, I've always balanced out my vitamins, my vegetable juice, but I would never mess around with my health like that. Those people don't even realize they're killing themselves, you know? Anyway, in the first place, one reason I take speed to help me be a productive, creative, functioning human being that makes contributions to society. Those people take drugs to end itself and they try and rationalize away of wasting their lives. I don't know where they're at. Real sickos. Oof. By the way, though, I want to know what you think of what Eugene was saying about shooting speed. I mean, I know I'm, I'm scared to death of needles and all, but do you think I'm being self-destructive? I mean, health-wise? Oh, I don't know. Have you ever thought about injecting it into your butt? Huh? Well, that way it'll get to your brain cells quicker, because that's where your brain is, Polly. I mean, do you know how totally dishonest you're being with yourself, talking about balancing your vegetable juices with your poisons? You're not a Millie Mouse junkie. You're a dodo bird. I need it to function in my career. What career? Hostile. OK, OK, you're right. I'm sorry. I am hostile. Let me express myself a little more clearly. Hey. You're not going to do it anymore, you understand? The ball game is over. Drugs are stupid, Polly. And anybody who takes drugs is stupid. That's it. It's boring. That's it. It's all over. It's done with. Now, give me those pills. That's it. Wait a minute. I'm going to cut down. I, honey, I can't just stop like that. I'm not the one with all those pills. I won't be able to write. I, I'll really be boring. Come on, honey. I'm going to lose my sense of humor. You think you're funny now? OK, OK. You make me laugh, I'll give you your pills back. Make me laugh. Come on. Come on, you stupid. Give them. Make me laugh. Come on, Tony. Make me laugh. Tell me a joke. That's really stupid. I can't. Okay, okay. Uh, there was a, a guy comes up to bum on the street and he and he he asked for a quarter, so he bit him. Oh, come on. Okay, well there's a, there was a, 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 a traveling salesman and a, and a farmer's daughter and oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. No, I got one. This is good. Uh, there was a, a tailor walking down the beach and and there was. Uh, Ain't funny, McGee. Oh. Come on, Tony, please, give me back my pills. Come on, please. Damn it, give me back those pills! I'll kill you! You creep! You're so righteous just because you're thinking it's legal! You don't have to overdo it on the chair. They're gonna uninvent it or something. You think I would ever take away your booze? No, I'd never do that. Do you know why? Because I'm a better person than you, that's why! Who did this to me anyway? It's all completely under control until I met you, you pompous ass! Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean any of it. It's just a... I know they're not my pills, and I need them, baby. Okay, okay. Okay, Polly, Polly, Polly. You want your pills? 
If you want your pills, here they are. Get them. Get them all. Get them all, Polly. Get them all. I don't know what I am trying to do with you. You're not going to change, and I'm not going to change. You have to change. You're great the way you are. You're good. You're kind. I'm dying, stupid. <gasps> That's right, Polly. I woke up this morning in an alcoholic's ward. No. My liver is shot, and I am dying. No. You know what? I don't care. So how can I really care about you when I don't care about myself, huh? No, don't do that. Stop there. Honey, I gotta talk to you, okay? What? Uh, I'm gonna have to take you and Nikki to Grandma's house for a while, okay? Why? I don't want you to be scared, but Mommy's not well, you understand? Everything's gonna be okay, but uh, I have to go to the hospital for a while to get better, you understand? Oh, don't cry, honey, please. Now, what I want you to do is, uh, I want you to go get yourself dressed, and you get Nikki dressed as soon as you can, because I don't have much time, okay? Is it from all those pills you took? Yeah. But I'm not going to take them anymore. You hear me? Because I love you more than I love those pills. I'm glad, Mom. I'm glad. Oh, honey, I love you so much. Everything's going to be all right, I promise you. And I'm so sorry. Just forgive me. And while I'm in the hospital, you be strong and you take care of Nikki for me, too, okay? Oh, and then I'm going to be the best mommy in the whole world, all right? Okay. So now you get yourself dressed. And get Nikki dressed and get downstairs in a few minutes, okay? Polly, what's the matter? Can I try and go up to bed? Come on, Judy, come on. Let's go and grab our bed, okay? I'll be up later to say goodnight, okay? Yeah, we'll see Mommy later. Come on. First one to talk to the bed. What's wrong, Polly? Daddy, uh, I need to leave the kids here with you and Mom for a while. I don't know how long it will be. Maybe a, a week, a month. I'm not really sure. Maybe you're exaggerating. 
exaggerating this whole thing. Daddy, I'm the one that took the pills, okay? Please, don't try and take even that away from me. Please. I'm very sorry. and say goodnight to him, okay? Yeah, he's back. Uh, room 310. Pills away, Tony. I I'm not gonna take them anymore. Great. Now you're getting smart. Okay, well, it's a little strange and all, but uh, I'm gonna make it. I'm checking the county general because they got a really good drug rehabilitation center there, and uh, they also have a really good program for alcoholics. So let's go, huh? <laughs> Leave all this. You can. There's a great chance that Tessie might come back. I can't, can't picture life without her. Please don't kill her. Let's go. Just put some I'm not going in. anywhere. Baby, I gave up my pills like you wanted. I take care of business and put my life in it. That's how it goes when two losers get together. One gets better, one gets worse. I said, are you just dense? Get up, get out of here. All right, you want to stay, stay. You want to die, die. Who cares? Get up, get out of here! Before I throw you out! All right, you want to stay, stay. I'm leaving. 
about it, Jen, anyway. Well, you try to follow me. I'll beat the hell out of you. Oh, oh you, you okay, honey? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't love you, Polly. I don't even like you. I don't want you around me, you understand? I was having time of my life until I met you. You messed up the whole party. You made me think about my life too much. No man wants to do that. Are you just gonna lie there and shake? Your withdrawal symptoms are a real turn off, honey. Boy, you're right. You are boring without your pills. Cry too. Go on, cry. Cry a lot. Cry a lot. Boy, you downer. Come on. Get out of here. Come no. on. Wait, wait. Get out. What? Get out. What? All right, listen to me. I don't want to have to repeat myself, all right? I hate you. I hate your guts. I hate you more than anyone I've ever met in my whole life. I can't stand you. I don't want you around me. I don't care about you. I don't care about your problems. All I want is you out of my life. I've been alone all my life anyway, and I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I know. If you die, I'll kill you. Baby, please come with me. To the hospital. I'm scared. You think I'm not? When we really hit bottom, you know, it can only get better. Okay. 